This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Welcome back to Caravan of Garbage. We are here to talk Superman IV because it's not a bloody drip, mate. Because it's because it's dying. Because it's he did it, folks. Bad. He did it. Uh, it's in need of um, hydration, mm-hmm. antibiotics, some orange slices. Yeah. yeah, it's very much on the way out at this point. This series, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I f- look at th- watching this. I almost. And it's, at certain points, I did feel bad yeah. that I was going to make fun of it yeah. so much. But also, it's go time, Superman it certainly 4. Is. It, your time has come, <laughs> Superman 4. Let's do this. And let's leave a like also while we're here. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, this the story of this was partially written by Christopher Reeve. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, this was his idea. And it's kind of a nice message because it's, a, it's about a little kid yeah. and he writes a letter to Superman and he says, what are you going to do about all these nuclear weapons, Superman? Yes. And, and what that, I love about but that... But it's a bad movie, though. That's yeah. the problem. It's very, very bad. So, yeah, that's uh, I've written that as story two because there's a uh-huh. few stories going on here because yeah. there's a nuclear arms race mm-hmm. uh, and people are like, ooh, danger, world over. The that's danger's right. happening. But then the teacher's like, what can we do? And these are, these are the options that come up. Think positive. Write senators. Mm-hmm. And those things in the real world, sure. But when the kid's like... Hey, maybe Superman should denuclearize the world. Everyone's like, uh, as if. <laughs> no, that's the answer. Yeah. That's what he's there for. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Well, you're glossing over the part where Santa might be able, also be able to do something. Oh, yeah, that's right. Maybe this is in the Santa Claus <laughs> universe, so, you know. We don't really know at this point. No. Yeah. So I thought that was strange. And then I also thought it was strange that he did get rid of all the nuclear weapons and then at the end went, maybe I shouldn't. Maybe hands off, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it, again, it is. It's a nice idea in theory, yeah. And in a, a, a fantasy world where where this is possible, but even in this world, Superman gets rid of all the nuclear weapons, and then the arms dealers are like, "This is great because we can sell people more nuclear weapons." Yeah. Like it's just yeah. If, it's if increased it, demand. In a way, if this happened in the real world, I'd be like, "I think Superman's in on this." <laughs> is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Superman making a little like extra, extra coin on the side there. Is he short stocking the nuclear arms oh market? Oh my god! If that's what short stocking is. Yes. Excellent. Uh, fun little fact from this. This mm. only relates to me specifically, but this is the f- James. Put your bins out. <laughs> I should tonight. Uh, but this is the first movie that I ever saw in cinemas. Wow. I was maybe three or four when it came to Australia. I definitely remember memories of watching it as a kid. Yeah. But I don't know if I saw it in the cinema. Yeah. I think maybe I read the junior novelization <laughs> sure, at some yeah. point, or I read. You know, have they used to have like little picture books and it yeah. have photos from the movie. Yeah, like yeah. maybe I read that. Yeah. Because I also have distinct memories of some scenes which aren't in this movie. Oh, I've got which, a list. Which are which evidently are deleted scenes yes. which probably would have been in the novelization. Absolutely. The, sh- the novelization is often based on the shooting script. Yeah, yeah. Which, which uh, you know, it's, it's based on an early draft rather of, of the mm. script, uh, which, which changed before they actually film it. Exactly. Another fun little fact, though. Yes. This movie was also the first time I got a taste of, of, of commenting on movies. So this My is what goodness. happened. This is what Here happened. we go. This is what happened in cinemas. Yeah, you're right. The moment where Nuclear Man gets in the elevator and he gets dragged to the moon mm. and he goes down and it goes dark, the cinema's silent. There's, it's, it, there's tension. It's, it's riding high because you know the sun is just going to crest over the moon. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I said out loud, is he dead? And everybody laughed. And... Uh, Mixed emotions? How'd you feel? Well, I kind of was... Honestly, I was just kind of like, meh. Like, it didn't bother me. But, like, I think if that would have happened a year later, I would have been horribly embarrassed. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I think I was young enough to be like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And if it happened to you now, you would have been like, yes, <laughs> I've got the audience in the palm of my hands. Uh, so, I'd also like to talk about the inception of this movie, if you don't mind. Go on. So, Canon... Uh, the Canon Group. The Canon Group. I'm, I'm well familiar with the Canon Group. <laughs> what, from, what do you know about them? I know that they started uh, making English versions of Swedish porn movies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like remakes, I guess. Sure. They did He Man. They did. Yep. They did. They've done. They've done some like award winning stuff. Yeah. But they've also done, for example, the 1973 karate kung fu blockbuster. Thunder kick. I'm not familiar with, with a Thunder man kick. who's kick punches with powerful kicks. No, I don't know. You mean like kick puncher from Community? Yeah, but it's a real, it's a real, it's, a real it's called Thunder kick. Oh, yeah. there you go. So they bought the rights to Superman so they could save the canon production industry, right? Huh. Uh, it did the opposite. So in order to get this oh, off no. the ground, 
Uh, they approached Richard Donner again, but he was doing one of the several lethal weapons that he was working mm-hmm. on at the time. Richard Lester was also approached. He couldn't do it after Superman 3. Christopher Reeve wanted Ron Howard, but he was doing Willow. Wes Craven was hired, but he didn't see eye to eye with Christopher Reeve and he left. Mm-hmm. So Christopher Reeve only agreed to come back and play Superman. Again, like you mentioned, he had more input on the story. And if the studio financed his uh, project Street Smart, which uh, oh. is about a pimp or something. I, I've, I looked at it, but then I didn't write it down. Huh. Sometimes I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but, pretty sure it's about a man with thunderous kicks, but all right. <laughs> you might be right. But then off the back of that, when they hired Sidney J. Fury to direct this, him and Christopher Reeve didn't get along. And if you watch a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, which I did extensively, <laughs> it's a lot of Christopher Reeve kind of directing and saying like, well, Superman could do this and this is how I would do it and whatever. It seems like he's very much hands on. So I think at this point, he's really the it's director. kind of his baby. And yeah. it really is because if you can't get him, it's, it's nothing really, is it? It really isn't. <laughs> like, imagine if this didn't have Christopher Reeve in it. Yeah. And they couldn't get the rights to Superman. And yeah. it was still, it was Nuclear Man versus Stupendous Man or whatever. <laughs> well, exactly. What yeah. a piece of garbage yeah, it would be. Yeah, that's right. So what ended up happening, though, some of the reason why it went bad is because the budget went from $36 million to $17 million. That's why it looks like shit. That's really why does. they use the same shot of him flying towards the camera multiple times. You probably mm. recognise that shot, right? You can see like the composite lines around. Oh, it's around so him. bad. There's a there's a scene where where Superman and Lois take another romantic flight around the world, and oh, it is just it's tragic, awful. It yeah. looks so bad. Yeah, it looks so bad. Uh, and also, as a result of this, Canon cancelled their Spider-Man movie after this tanked. So they were they were heating up for the for the superhero game. Yeah. And imagine if this went well, and then Spider-Man went well. Who knows where DC and Marvel would be at this point? Yeah. We probably already have crossover movies. Yeah, I was going to say we might have had the that uh, a movie adaptation of the famous Superman and Spider-Man team up from back in the day. Where it's just Spider-Man struggling to keep up. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how I'd write it. Uh, so another story point, and I've written here story one. Uh, the Daily Planet is under attack by big business who just want clickbait headlines, which for the day was snatch up newspaper headlines. That's right. Is that how that works? <laughs> and the way that... So put, put a coin in that box yeah. on the side of the, the street headlines and open the thing and take a couple and sell them to your friends. Take probably. as many as you want. It doesn't matter. And as a result of, of that, uh, the people at the Daily Planet aren't happy. And he's brought in his daughter also, Lacey, who... Lacey? Lacey, yeah. Yeah, who... um who is a love interest also, which I want to talk about in a bit, but also kind of, you know, and a right kind of rival to Lois Lane. But also at the end, this story point is resolved by Perry White going to the bank, taking out a <laughs> huge loan, yes. and then buying all the leftover stock in the dying newspaper, The Daily Planet, just before a huge economic crisis also. Mm-hmm. It's done anyway, right? Like, he's killed it. Well, maybe that's what, Super- what's what happens in <laughs> Superman 5. I don't know. <laughs> I've got. I've, I actually do have things. To Superman, say about. can you can you collect all the unsold newspapers in a big net and throw them into the sun, <laughs> Superman? <laughs> oh, that's not going to save anything. Okay, no, right. No, that's it. Uh, Lacey is also played by Mariel Hemingway, mm. which makes her. No, I was going to say it makes her the second Hemingway to be in a in a superhero movie, but I'm thinking of J.D. Salinger's. You kid, are, yeah, who yeah. Is Captain America? Is she related to Hemingway? Yeah, it's his. That's her grandfather. Really? Yeah. Do you think they put the glasses on her to be like... Like, 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 like Hemingway. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay, sure. We both had different ideas about glasses. Sure, yeah. That's what's great about movies. They're open to interpretation. We both had different interpretations <laughs> of who the greatest author slash journalist of all time is. <laughs> Very true, yeah. So the, the third art story of this, I guess, oh, it's not really, there's not really third, there's, there's many more. It's the creation of Nuclear Man. Mm-hmm. And what I love leading up to that is Superman goes back to his Fortress of Solitude and he's like, listen, crystals from the past and uh, dead Kryptonian leaders, what do you think I should do? And they're like, don't interfere, don't do anything. But also like, aren't you the guys that said don't do anything and then your world exploded? Yeah. Why do you even have this on file? And he Just smash yeah. those crystals. <laughs> and he has, a, he, has a, he has a note on his hand that just says, do the opposite of whatever the Kryptonian <laughs> scientists say. <laughs> the biggest idiots in the galaxy. Mm. So Lex Luthor's back, Gene Hackman. Smartest man in the world. He's doing all right, he's, I guess. He's decided he's going to defeat Superman by creating a nuclear man. Yes, a nuclear man. No, he says nuclear yes, man. Yes, he does say it oddly. Like Homer he? Simpson would. <laughs> yes. So the smartest man in the world. Well, he did create a man. That's pretty good. A, I nucle- guess. a, a nuclear, nuclear man. man. So he's a quick. Oh my god, maybe he wasn't creating a nuclear man after all. What do you think he was creating? He's like, no, a no, TV you can, dinner. You're confused. I'm making a nuclear man. It's different. <laughs> uh, so. 
There's a question about his hair though. Yes. Because it's clearly just Gene Hackman's own hair in this. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, he's quite, you know, balding at this point. Was Lex Luthor just shaving his head? Was that what this was? Oh, in the context, in the, yeah, the context in this of universe. the story. Because okay, right. you wouldn't wear a, th a very thinning wig, would you? No, that's true. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> unless you want to, unless, unless you feel there's more value to thinning real hair than being bald. That's actually a good point. Yeah. Uh, bald viewers, mm. uh, let us what know in the think? comments. Yeah, in the comments. Let us know. Yeah. I want to talk about Superman, though. I don't want to talk about hair as you well. You want to talk about him. Superman in a Superman movie Very much review? So. This is fascinating coming. You've changed. <laughs> in, a, in a way, I have. In, in the past, this would have been all wig talk, honestly. <laughs> okay. We're doing hair talk. Okay. Because there's a single strand of his hair yeah. easily holding up a thousand pound or whatever it is. Indestructible, except if you've got a pair of bolt cutters. Yes. Which, of course, speaks to the question, the age old question how does Superman cut his hair? Um, a mirror with lasers normally. Also, sometimes isn't it that his hair isn't like indestructible and you can just cut it with scissors? I don't know. But then if he's re-entering the atmosphere, it doesn't matter. What am I doing? <laughs> all what am I doing? Burn, all his hair would burn off, James. Yes. And I'm talking all his hair. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yes. So, do you think, though, giving... Manscaped.com. <laughs> That's right. Do you think, though, giving away a piece of your genetic material is a good idea? He's not that smart, James. <laughs> Remember, he did that interview where he revealed all his strengths and weaknesses. He did, he did, didn't he? But, uh, so, yeah, as a result of this, they create a nuclear man. Which is to say Lex and Lenny Luthor. Yes, Lenny his, Luthor. His newly revealed mm. nephew. Yes. Yeah, who he hates. Who he hates, that's right. But I kind of enjoy the villain, uh, Nuclear Man, mm. because it's kind of like fighting like a feral cat. Go no, on. he's like erratic and he's scratchy yeah. and he's mean. Yeah. I just think he's do you think he's got that energy? Do you know what I mean? A little bit. He's got yeah. that kind of wild vibe about it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? You, you can't pet him because mm. he's gonna he'll scratch you on the neck. Sometimes he'll roll over to reveal his belly <laughs> and you're like, mm, should I give him a scratch? Because he will he will attack me. He really will. With all his ma many vaguely defined powers. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you about this specifically, because I, I feel like you'd be a fan. But uh, Clark Kent, a.k.a. Superman, a.k.a. Kal-El. What? Yes, Maxon. It's been Clark's, four movies. Clark Kent is Superman? That's right. Oh, my God. He, this changes everything. He has to uh, go on two dates at once. I think for the purposes of national security, we should edit that out of the video. His secret identity. You're probably right. But yeah. yes, he has to, uh, a la the many sitcoms and also the Superman stories of the you know golden and silver sure, age, yeah. uh, Lacey asks specifically mm. if Clark and Superman can go on a double date with her and Lois Lane. Yeah. And he says yes, because he's a <laughs> bad person, it seems. And dumb. Because the thing is, like, there is a very long history in the comic books, especially in the, you know, the golden and silver, especially, you know, both of them, mm. where it's just Superman messing with Lois Lane. Yeah. Just for a laugh. He's ultimately. got her in space and he's like, agree to marry me, I'll cut off the oxygen or whatever. Yeah, yeah, there's just, but this Superman isn't, like, he's too nice to be that. Yeah. So he's just decided to ruin everyone's nights <laughs> for no real reason. Yeah. Like, who's having a good time here? Lois isn't. Nah. La 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 Lacey isn't. Lana Lacey isn't. Either. Absolutely. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Lana wasn't even invited. Yeah. Because he doesn't have a third persona. No, he really doesn't. You should get one. I mean, he kind of does. He's got back in Smallville. Yeah, that's kind of his Maybe third he persona. was going on a third date with yeah. Lana in Smallville. Yeah. He kept having to fly back and forth. I feel like that is the real him though, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. getting off topic. Because what I want to talk about is, uh, again, and we've, we've come back to it, we've come full circle to the memory wiping kiss. Oh, he's done it again. Is he constantly like dropping Lois off a building and then revealing himself to be Superman and then he's like, listen, I just kind of need a bit of a pep talk and then just wiping your it's memory? It's so mean. <laughs> like he's just, yeah, I just need I just need you to do something for me. And then she re then she reveals, oh, oh Cl uh, Clark, I've known all along and oh, I remember everything and what a wonderful time. And then they fly all around the world. And yeah. Then she's like, here's some advice. And he's like, cool, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Like, you know, surely at this point they realised there's probably not going to be another one of these. So why not give them both a happy ending no. that, that would appreciate No. It? Also, it's just occurred to me, who else is he doing it to? <laughs> Does he foil a bank yeah. robbery in the bank? One of the bank robbers is like, I saw you come out of that phone booth. I know who you really are. And he's like, well, pucker up, buddy. I believe there's, Here a, we go. there's a robot chicken sketch that is specifically that. Oh, just no. him kissing people around the world. Great joke, though. If you had to come at this in 2008, mate, that would have been oh absolutely God. lit. That would have been my time. <laughs> 
So I've got a couple of uh, miscellaneous Superman notes, if you will. Yeah, sure. Some memories of this movie. Miscellaneous super notes. Very good. Yeah, I like that. And there's a trumpet. <laughs> yeah, there would be. To, to ben, announce each, needs, each it, super yeah, note. There needs yeah. to be a trumpet. These aren't even very good, but the trumpet will probably kind of be The trumpet will sell them, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. so too. In a way, Superman's not the, that great of a superhero, but the cape and the trumpet <laughs> sells it. They certainly do. So Superman getting sick and skinny. Do you think that's taken from The Dark Knight Returns where he gets hit with a nuclear bomb? Also nuclear in this, by the way. Or do you think nobody involved in this has ever read a comic and it's just a coincidence? The second one, absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah, wanted yeah. to check, yeah. So, you know the, the scene with the Great Wall of China? That he rebuilds with, uh, with his eyes. Yeah. If you look at that closely, what actually happened there was they were going to get Superman going at super speed and he was going to rebuild it. And then they were like, we're running out of money. Things are going south here fast. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take a shot of Christopher Reeve looking and then we're going to just make lasers come out of his eyes. But it's a blue laser because it's a different laser. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to cut back to him and it's the same shot but just reversed and do the same thing again and then he waves and flies away. Because what it was supposed to be, he fixes it and then he waves and he goes. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. made it into that for oh, whatever boy. reason. I mean, there's obvious reasons. They, yeah, they run the out of money. Thing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with the very slow moon fight... Also, they don't need to be moving slow. They're super beings. That just occurred to me. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I can't believe he shifts the moon. That's very uncool. Don't do that. Wow. Don't you think? Are you just mad because this will change your star sign somehow, James? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Very much so. Remember when Jim Carrey did it in the movie where he was God or whatever? And everything was like all fucked up. Oh. Yeah. Remember that movie? Wow. Do you remember the movie Sonic? That's another Jim Carrey movie. <laughs> it's, I, rem <laughs> okay. I remember every Jim Carrey movie, yes. <laughs> Very good. So there's also a moment where... But the, I don't really, but all I remember is the movie Yes Man. <laughs> and I'm basing my answer on that. James just asked me a question. I said yes. Like Yes Man would, I guess, in a way. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Lacey's just dragged into space. Very far from Earth. Mm. Do you think that was just a thing with special effects where they just went... Just put the Earth in the background, whatever. Like, wow. I don't think it was supposed to be space initially, maybe. Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't know. Also, Paul, the guy from the gym, he's just a poser. His muscle definition is limited at best. I Are don't like that. Are you saying that even for the 80s? Even for the 80s. I mean, I guess in the 80s we had, like, Hulk Hogan. Yeah, but, and, there, and... but there was nothing in between. You're yeah. either a, a roided-out monster mm -hmm. or whatever Paul's supposed to be. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, I don't like you, but you're not supposed to, are you? I like when he gets little revenge. He's petty, isn't he? He a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of, is that outfit that Clark wears uh, with grey sweatpants, which people are a big fan of for some reason. I don't want to get into it. but Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but do you think that's a cool outfit now? I don't know anything about clothes. You're more of a clothes man. You look at that, do you go towel yeah, tucked yeah. into the Adidas sweat top or whatever it's supposed to yeah, be? Yeah, that's a, is that a good look? That's I mean, you know, Adidas is the that's the yeah. gold standard. In Australia, we say Adidas. We do. Because it's not, the correct way right. to say it. It is, isn't it? Um, but also, what is he doing? Why is he at the gym? What is he doing? I don't know. Also, you've just met this person. Just be a bit more confident around her. Mm. Just be a bit more normal. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I do want to talk about John Cry's role in this movie. Okay, Lenny uh, Luthor, yeah. As mentioned uh, in previous videos, he does uh, reappear in the DC Universe as Lex Luthor, doesn't That's he? Right, he's back yeah. and he's like, I've got a goatee and no hair. Rad. Uh, he was very excited to, uh, to be involved in this film. I bet the character wasn't as excited when he was handed to a priest at the end. Oh, my goodness, yes. That didn't age right. super well. No. Can you look after this boy for me, please? <laughs> but John Cry, though, it was a dream come true for him. He had a blast filming it. And I've yep. got an interesting quote about uh, kind of how this movie went, if you don't mind. Sure. I'm going to recount it. James has a cheeky little grin. I do. It means this is some... Super trivia. That's right. So he had a bit of fun, though, on, on set. Like, he couldn't believe he was involved in it. It all looked great. You know, he's lifted up in a car with Lex Luthor yeah. by Superman. Imagine being involved in that. Because you don't know what it's going to look like. That's true. And by all accounts, everyone was saying it was going to be great before they stripped everything out of it. And then he noticed, like, you no, know, the catering's getting a bit light. Uh -huh. Things are getting speeding up a bit with production. There's uh -huh. a bit of infighting on set and whatever. So here's the quote now. A few months later, I ran into Chris Reeve on the street and I said, hey, let's have lunch. And he said, okay, sure. We went out for lunch. And I said, I'm so excited about the movie. When's it coming out? And he said, takes a deep breath. You need to know it's an absolute mess. We had six months of flying work that we were supposed to shoot. They cut five months of it. Oh my and God. you can see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember? Because in the first movie, he came back for like half a year to do all that extra special effects stuff. And he's banking and rolling. He's making a day of it. Mm. Making six months of it. Yeah, I mean, in this, they just took, I guess, one Polaroid of him and just waved <laughs> it in front of the camera. 
So they've thrown together an edit that barely makes any sense, and I was absolutely devastated because I really wanted to be part of bringing Superman back, you know. And that was the thing, because Chris Reeve came back to this because he realised, despite, you know, what happened with the third one, he wasn't happy with it, and he wasn't really going to do it, and he was kind of done with it. He's like, this is a character people love, and I, and I want to kind of give that sense of hope and optimism, and they want to see this again. And they fucked it completely. <laughs> yeah. They also cut it to 90 minutes because it is the shortest one. Yes, that's by true. quite a bit. It is mercifully short. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Because then you get more screenings out of it. You can run it more times that's during true. the day. It's still tanked. It didn't matter. But here's the thing, though. I think with a tighter narrative, this is an absolutely fine Superman story. On the surface yeah, level, uh-huh. Lex Luthor creates an equivalent and they battle on the moon or whatever. That's... It's primo stuff. Come on, yeah. man. That's yeah, yeah. that's. I think this totally could have worked. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. There is a bunch of deleted scenes, which I alluded to before when I said there was a bunch of deleted scenes. Uh, so maybe it he was... He doesn't know what alluded means, but I I'm not going to correct him. It's too late in illusions, the video. Illusions. Like illusions, like magic. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So maybe we are going to get a Sydney J Fury cut of... Uh, like the Donner cut. Yeah. Like the Snyder cut. Release the Sydney J Fury cut? Yes. He's 87 years old. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he probably hasn't worked in 100 years because of this movie. I'm sorry. And I'm sorry to Mark Pillow, who played Nuclear Man. I thought you did a pretty good job. I thought it was good, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Certain charm to him. What do you do with it? You just look like Dolph Lundgren. That's what you do. He didn't even get to use his own voice. No, he really didn't. So uh, there was going to be more love scenes with Lacey where they go on various dates. Hot stuff. More of that, please. Uh, there was also going to be a second Nuclear Man. Or a first Nuclear a Man. A first one, and then he's kind of defective. And, and he's yeah. going to be more a bizarro yeah. kind of guy, right? Uh, there's a, there's actually, I found some behind-the-scenes footage uh, where they were going to crush a car together, and you can see them <laughs> doing that. Into a heart? I guess. It's nice. Yeah. There was also going to be flashbacks of Superman as a baby because he does have perfect recall in some versions, ah, so he probably see, remembers. Right. Does that mean they were going to get Brando back? Probably not, huh. but you could have done some variation on on you know Krypton being back on Krypton. I remember uh, being born. Yeah, and there was a lot of shattered glass happening as I crashed through that skylight. They're also originally going to do Bizarro, played by Christopher Reeve. Oh, that would be so yeah. good. But they kind of did it already in the previous in movie. Three, yeah. Also, it's probably very expensive to do. Yeah, and if yeah. they were going to do it in this one, it'd mm. be bad. Yeah. So. In theory, yes, it's probably best they didn't. That being said, apparently, mm. uh, hot, hot news, hot off the presses. Mm. They're going to do a comic book version yeah, that's called right. Superman 78, which is going to be an expansion of the, the this universe. So maybe we will, we will see a, a, a Bizarro in that. About gosh darn time, don't you think? I agree. I'm excited for that. Uh, so yeah, there was also there was a planned fifth movie, because you've always got to be looking ahead to the mm-hmm. future. Yeah. What happens in this one? Superman dies and is resurrected in the bottle city of Kandor. Ooh. Yeah, so what do you think of that? He'd be little. He'd be little, yes, He'd be that's little's right. little Superman. Yeah, so he's walking around, he's like, what's going on here? Would Supergirl be in it or whatever? Because she's Maybe. from Candor. I don't know. Uh, this movie does, though, have a, a, a bit of like, it predicts the future. It alludes <laughs> to the future, Mason. Go on. Because when he drops Lex Luthor off uh, into the rock pit at the end, mm-hmm. he says, see you in 20, Lex, or something like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The next Superman movie comes out 19 years later. So he was nearly right. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Lex probably got early release for good behaviour. That's right. <laughs> so if people are wondering, though, uh, are you going to... Kevin Spacey, though, so probably not. Yeah, boo. And no thank you. If people, though, are curious, like, whether we're going to do Superman Returns, guess what? We did it. Surprise. It's done. It's already... It's, it's in your hot little hands already. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, I'll link that below if you do want to check it out. Um, but, yeah, this is sort of the end of the Chris Reeve movies, though... We might be coming back next week to do the Donner cut of Superman uh, 2. That's right. Might be nice to go back to a more competent Superman movie. Yeah, I mean, let's let's watch it and see. Yeah. I mean, if it's mostly the same except the Kryptonians go to jail at the end. No <laughs> dice. <laughs> no, thank you. It's death in a pit or nothing, if you ask me. <laughs> I agree. So, yeah, uh, if you do want to see that, let us know below. And if you want to see any of these early, guess what? You can. You go to bigsandwich.co. You sign up. It's only nine bucks a month. Maybe that's a lot of money to you, so maybe that's too much. You don't have to do it, that's fine. But these episodes go up early. An ad-free feed of our podcast, The Weekly Planet, goes up there early or so. We get, well, there's bonus podcasts, even more podcasts. Even more podcasts. We do one on clickbait. We do one called Time Crapture, where we look at particular years in pop culture. We do one on a comic book club, don't that's we? That's right. We're going to do Death of Superman. Maybe it's out by now. I don't know where oh, I'm excited for that one. Me too. Uh, and also, we have a bunch of movie commentaries, which you might want to check out. Marvel, DC, everything in between. Not everything in between, just some others, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
If you don't, I think we did Independence Day, but don't worry about that one. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching Caravan of Garbage. We'll see you next week and just hang around. We'll go, but you hang around on YouTube. Like, is there, is there like a lobby or something? There's a lobby. There's a YouTube. waiting lobby. Huh. Yeah. Never seen that. Uh, unless if you don't have autoplay on, you, you just shuffled into a lobby. Huh. Mm. Can I get like a, like a no, cup, of, no, cup of no, tea or something? No. No amenities at all. No amenities. Can I go to the toilet? No, mate. Oh. No amenities. Wow. They allude to it, huh. but there'd be none there. Well, then I would I would click autoplay and go to the next <laughs> Mr. Sunday Movies video. Hopefully. Yeah. If the algorithm is kind. Goodbye. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.